What's up guys? So listen, if you're a member of the modern day retro gaming community, you've probably heard of the company 8BitDo. 8BitDo. I've heard both, I say both. Forgive me. 8 Doom arguably makes some of the best modern day retro controllers that you can buy. I actually have two of them. The SN30 Pro, which is a modern take on the Super Nintendo controller. And then I have the 8 Doom Pro 2, which is the literally the same controller just with handles. And truth be known, outside of the OEM controllers, this is undeniably the best controller I've ever used. But the struggle with that is you can't really use these controllers on your old console. You can really only use them to emulate those old games on your computer. So 8 Doom actually thought about that and they partnered with the company Analog to make this. This is a wireless Bluetooth receiver that you can plug in to your retro consoles. I have the Super Nintendo one here, but they also make one for the NES and for the Genesis slash Mega Drive. And this is exactly what you think it would be. You plug it into your retro console and it allows you to connect a Bluetooth controller and use it to play your retro games. And according to 8 Doe, it can use any of their Bluetooth controllers, the Xbox controller, the DualShock 3, DualShock 4, and DualShock 4 Pro. It says that on the case, but on their website, it gives even more. So why don't we unbox this little guy, show you what 25 bucks actually gets you, give it a try and actually see how it works with how many different controllers I can connect to it and see if it's actually worth your money. So let's do that right now. All righty then. So as you can see, this is actually a really small package. I'm actually just gonna compare it here to a Switch Joy-Con. And it's, <laughs> it is really damn small. So don't expect too much to come out of this box, all right? And there it is. You get the receiver and a little USB cable. Now this cable here, I was a little confused on it at first but this cable here is actually meant to plug into this so you can update the firmware on this guy because out of the box, this thing does not support the DualSense controller. You have to plug this into a computer to let, it, to let the firmware on it update to make sure it can accept DualSense controllers. But that's really easy to do, so it should not at all be a concern. Now for what this thing's able to do, I want to stress how actually kind of like impressive it is how small this thing actually is because it is almost exactly the same size as the plug for the Super Nintendo controller. I have my SNS 102 model controller here and let's just actually compare that really quick. It is a little bit bigger. As you can see, it is the slightest bit taller on the body. I guess that'd be wider. It is the slightest bit wider on the body. Naturally, it is gonna be a bit longer, but thickness wise, it is either identical or even slightly smaller. And the plug size, as they should be, is pretty much identical. It is obviously going to be made of plastic, but it actually feels very, it feels very similar to the plastic that the original plug was made out of, and it actually feels a little stronger, because if I squeeze on this guy, I do feel a little bit of bend, like a little bit of give to it. Whereas this guy is just incredibly solid. It does require power, obviously, because it does have to power the, the Bluetooth guts inside here. But the good news is it draws all the power it needs from the console. So this USB, this USB port here is just to plug it into your computer. It is not needed to actually use it with the console. However, you can use this as a Bluetooth receiver for your computer. Let's say your computer, you have a bit older of a computer and that doesn't have Bluetooth in it. You can actually just plug this into your computer and use this as a Bluetooth card. So yeah, that's kind of it. It's kind of all you get here. So let's plug this, let's go over to the TV. We'll plug this guy in and we'll try it with a bunch of different controllers. So let's go do that right now. All right, so we got our Super Nintendo set up. So we're gonna just plug this guy in here. So let's turn this bad boy on. And as you'll see, the blue light there starts blinking. I'm gonna press this red button and it's gonna enter pairing mode. And so we're gonna take our 8 2 controller. I'm using the Pro 2 for the first test. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's in X mode. That's for X input. And you're gonna to to turn it on. Turn on the controller. Let it start blinking. Wow, it found it right away. It didn't even have to like turn on pairing mode. So our left and right's working. Our B is working. Our A is working. 
So I'm not super, I'm not the most used to Mario World is, okay, so yeah, that's just a run button, it is working. So our left and right, are, our L and R are working too, because we can move the camera. I should actually probably like sit down and try to beat Mario World one day, I never actually have. All right, let's try it with the SN30 Pro. Enter controller pairing mode. Turn it on to X input mode. Will it find it? Or do I need to turn it into pairing mode? Looks like I'm gonna have to turn it into pairing mode, so let's just do that. So it's in pairing mode now, and it looks like it found it. Let's see. Regular jump, spin jump. We got both runs. Left and right's working. Down, up. So let's try another controller. Let's try the Switch Pro controller. Switch Pro controller is working. We can look up, we can look down, we can jump on enemies. We can run, oh, I'm running out of time. And it killed me. Whoops. So our Switch Pro controller is working. Let's try our Xbox One controller. Send this into pairing mode. I think my batteries were dead, so let's try that again. Up, down works. Left and right work. You can use the stick if you want to. Both run buttons work. Both jump buttons work. Okay, so the Xbox controller works. Let's try the DualSense. So as you can see, a DualSense controller will also work. So we've got our left and right, our up, our down, our, our L, our R, both A and B are working, both run buttons are working. Take a pause. Okay. One little thing to note, I did have a little trouble getting my DualSense connected to it. This one that I bought after I got my PlayStation connected just fine, but the one that I got with my PlayStation did not want to connect. I wonder if it's a firmware thing on this that I need to update, or maybe this one has the most up-to-date firmware and this one hasn't been updated yet, and that's what made it work here. I'm not sure, but that's just something to be aware of if you're trying to, if you're gonna buy this thing to use with a DualSense controller. Just be aware. And for kicks and giggles, let's try a single Joy-Con. That connected almost immediately. So if you're really strapped for uh, playability, you can even use a single Joy-Con, even though this is by far the worst way to play this game. I would have tested it with more controllers. These are the controllers that I have readily available to me. The rest of them are currently in storage because again, I'm moving. And it should also be noted that they do say on their website that the newest run of Xbox controllers, I believe it said an Xbox controller made in 2021 or newer, that they are not supported by this because they use a different Bluetooth connection than what this receiver supports. So long as you have like an Xbox One controller, it does support that. Although the Xbox controller is not really the one that I would recommend to use with older consoles. I would leave that to something like the 8-Bit 2 controllers or maybe even the DualSense where the D-pad is in a much more comfortable position. Another quick thing to note, if you update to the newest version of the firmware for this guy, it actually supports that wireless Super Nintendo controller that Nintendo released a couple years back. So if you want that a proper, authentic, modern retro experience, that might be the way to go. But yeah, 8-Bit 2 has always been kind of the king of the modern retro gaming market, and they really hit it out of the park with this. It's 25 bucks, and for the versatility that this allows you to play your retro games, I can't do anything but recommend this. Hell, I'm gonna go get the NES one and the Genesis one here in just a little while. AP2, if you're listening, please release an N64 version of this thing. 
I would love you forever and I would easily buy four of them, probably more. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Have you tried this after hearing about it here? Is this something that you would want to get? Let me know down in the comments your opinions. I'd love to hear from you. But that's gonna be it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to bringing you even more reviews of things like this as the days go on. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, y'all.